And for those of you just checking in, guys, this is Dylan for MyBet.com, part of our Storm Poker Challenge in the Riders of the Storm series. And playing four, as you guys see here, four cash game tables at full speed ahead. I'm running pretty well. Um, had a couple bad beats, a couple, couple decent pots. Um, running, as I had just shown you guys before the break, at about a stack and a half up at this point. We'll just check it. Alright, and we bet it after a check. So he may have missed both of these flush draws, and again, we bet out half pot. He's only going to let it go one time and three for us to break even, guys. That's the idea. And here we three bet re steal from the big with our suited ace jack. Flap that. Flop the one over card and the flush draw, so we semi bluff bet into that. Get raised for two on the six, so three and a bit to one. We need four to one. We're looking good for the call. We hit, now we check. Hope that he takes another shot. He does not, so now we gotta make our final value bet here a little smaller, something like that. Hope to get paid off with a king. Uh, mm -hmm. I think that's all she wrote there. And yeah, that worked out well. Right. Still raise it on the button with our tens. Get re raised here from Rocky Raccoon. And gotta believe it. We don't wanna go flat and out of position with that hand. Um, you know, steal raise, let it go. With that, you're decent. Decent holdings a lot when you're out of position. Not always, but a lot. And the 160 again, we got a big stack player here, so just when you add on 10 to that, right, that's 16 bones, and we've got that with the implied outs for set value call. Um, or the open and straight draw. <laughs> uh, he checks it, that's always nice, so we're just going to take the free card here. Uh, look for, you know, 9 is so brilliant. <laughs> um, doesn't happen. He checks and now bets out. Alright, so it was a delayed C bet. Um, again. We're on a, you know, we need we need five to one on this, and it's a two suited board. Board's already paired. Again, king queen's already killing us. Um, yeah, just let that go. If it were non paired monotone board, I would have found a call there potentially for the implied odds. Um, but yeah, that was yeah way way too way way too light. And we just check out. Steel race here with the fours on the button. And again, this is a push from this guy, right? So, yeah. 44. Big C bet, and that's just going to be a fold as well. Save that cash, guys. Penny saved is a penny earned. That is so very true in poker. Yeah, it's min bet stuff. Don't understand it. Really don't understand it. Um, however, just for the miracle, given our pot odds there, <laughs> who knows? Yeah, now I bet the 80 and we can let that go. And we did have two outer. And at 23 to 1, we were close actually with his min bet. <laughs> okay, okay, here we go again. Um, over pair. He's either got it or he doesn't. We shove. Yep, so flop threes. Uh, set of threes. Again, over pair guys, not a big hand, only a good hand. And yeah, we got sucked in there on flop set. It's gonna happen. Yeah, that's gonna leave a mark for sure. Here we flat uh, in position. Checks a bet as a float from us. Uh, again, here. Let's go ahead and bet that out. See if he can't let that go in the river. And he bets yet again. And that's our checkout card. Yeah, 
right, so we got absolutely nothing versus three players, and that's a big full course with that hand. Um, again, guys, yeah, power of the set. You know, we had that over over pair. He hit. Potentially, we could let that go, like we let the uh, the aces go earlier in the session. But yeah, we thought he might have been on over pairs, and uh, what to do? Value bet here on the end, and we take it down. Value bet, guys, is by the way, it's you know, it's a bet when you have a very beatable hand, um, but you have a hand that you still think is good, uh, given the play or whatever, whatever else your instincts are telling you here. And yeah, that's the idea. And you know, betting for value, people use it in different different ways. Uh, one is a, in a situation like that where you have the unimpaired and you still think you're good. Um, Others is betting for values, you no know, kind of value maximization. That means you know when you have when you have the best of it, um, making your bet sizing such that you get paid off. That's yeah, value maximization, uh, value maximization of betting for value. Also, also using that context. All right. You guys are seeing, you know, a lot of guys will be flatting any ace, right? Uh, especially versus, uh, or even versus um, early position raises. And we're not doing that, you know. We're, we're open raising with some of these, you know, wider ranges, but we're not flatting with those necessarily versus, versus one guy. Here we isolated the limper. We make our C bet represent the over pair. Get flatted, actually pick up our king. Very nice. Make a bigger bet because we don't want to see a club. And. <laughs> Yeah, a lot of these guys can't let go of those, uh, can't let go of those two clubbies. And if he's got the eight, you know, we're toast, but we're going to put him all in one way or another. And hope to see, you know, ace-ten or something like that. Ah, bummer. And here in position, you know, blind battle, he just completes. We raise up a lot of hands, not just a Broadway, but a lot of other random cheese and nonsense. Um, and then you see that pretty much everything. That's... Good three-quarter pot bet, guys, uh, on two-suited boards, connected boards, stuff like that. Again, we see that that represents the queen after his complete call. And yeah, he checks behind. <laughs> and we're really worried now after that check call business and the uh, third diamond comes. We see a bet. <laughs> and it's a big bet. Look what I'm going to do, guys. This is really sick. But I think we're toast, you know. Ten King is also playing here. Uh, any two pair, any any two diamonds, and you know we just saved. In my mind, we just saved fifty, a little under fifty big ones, uh, and I probably could have done it also with the the King set earlier. But again, you gotta, you know, without the stats, guys. I mean, you're really really playing a little blind. You gotta wake your inner Jedi <laughs> uh, here at the storm tables. But yeah, that's. Yeah, it's, it's a lot to do with feel and really, really knowing the game as well. Uh, yep, I think that's all right. Oh, ha! For example. <laughs> oh, mercy. You know, I had the king and he flopped a set of kings. Um, and that's just ridiculously unlikely. That's, for all intents and purposes, flopping quads with the pair, right? It's a little, a little better than that. Um, but yeah, hard, hard luck. Last couple of hands, actually. So we think our ace-10 here is still good. Um, take another shot on the turn. Don't want to see another diamond. Um, six, seven, eight. Pick up the outside straight draw. Here we're going to flat this also for the nine. Free turn. Well, wow. okay, so we actually do pick up the nine, and now we're gonna pot it, and hope he's not on the back door flush draw. And after all these checks, guys, I'm putting them on queen, ace, or better, and bet my nines out. Um, might have got host here. We'll see. We'll see ace king. Nice. <laughs> so again, yeah, you're not, you're not gonna, you're not gonna call them all, but with time, you'll be calling a lot of them. Let's see what he had. 46 mercy okay uh, way off the chain um, didn't put it on that uh, that crazy range but 
yeah, what to do. Because he bets it out here, we still got our nine, and we're flattening this here as a crying call. 79 he has. Um, hmm. You know, he could have missed the flush, um, could have had under pair, stuff like that, and took a shot. And we thought our top pair there with the ace was still decent. And we call one down. And again, guys, when you're making river calls, it's not like when you're making um, pot odds calls, right? You're you're asking yourself not, you know, what's the pot odds? Uh, what are the pot odds in relation to my to my completion odds? Um, when you're on a draw, for example, rather, am I going to be ahead X percent of time? X percent of the time when I actually make this call. Sixty-seven suited. Steel raise on the button. Ace king. All right. See if we can start catching some hands again. Raise it up, steal raise with the king queen. Flop our overs. He did flat us. Let's see what he says to our bet on the flop. We pick up our ace. Very good. Make another bet. I'm gonna open raise here with the ace six again. Eight, nine, ten, jack. Rainbow board, open in a trade draw, we bet that out. Definitely call here. 80, oh my god. 89. Flop the 73 to 1 uh, trips there, guys. Don't worry about it. Uh, we've got enough, we don't have enough actually to pick it up in the back. We'll let that go. Alright, All right, on the down tick, guys. Um, gonna tighten up here and. Yeah, play on. I think it was the music change. Queen, raise up. Steel raise, ace jack. 45 suited might find a call. Uh, again, versus multiple limpers. Against a deeper stack player, I might have, might have flatted that even out of position. Only because it's suited. And again, guys, not because suited is much better. Rather, you're gonna, with the same rank, be suited one time in four, whereas you'll be off suited with the same rank uh, three times in four. Effectively reducing the amount of hands that you're playing with that um, speculation. Alright, 810 min raise, we call that, get priced in. Two over cards in the flush draw, and we semi bluff donk out. And again, guys, donk bets, you know, that's not. Um, what a lot of guys commonly think. A donk bet is a positional move. <laughs> That's where you're not the pre-flop aggressor and you make the first aggressive action on the flop. Here after check we take a shot. Raise up the king 10 0. And we get raised here from the button. And let that go. And we gotta walk and send my bluff donk it out. <laughs> okay, I wouldn't have that I wouldn't theoretically be a donk because it was a limp pot, but um, yeah, close enough. Alright, let's isolate here from the button with our offsuit Broadway hand. And flop top pair, decent kicker, two suited board. He checks, we bet, he bets, we'll probably raise. And again, two suited board guys, um, three quarter pot, two third three-quarter pot bets, uh, monotone, or forgive me, uh, rainbow boards, then you want to go ahead and make your half pot bets in general, in general, just as a standard rule. All right, so he check calls. Uh, there's the third diamond, and of course, we're totally unstoked about that. Uh, and there's a the king. We're just going to take a free showdown. And actually, our 10 was good. It's always nice. We flopped the over pair here. Bet it out, but again, low boards, guys. Careful with those sets. <laughs> uh, all right, we three bet with, from the big here with our ace queen suited. He only flats, and we take a shot. Flat here for set value. Check behind. No, nope, uh, check out of position here um, for pot control. He bets the two, and now we're now we're really getting worried. Um, really getting worried. Ah, <sighs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There's the third diamond. Our 10 still high. We're going to turn our hand here into a bluff catcher. We'll see if he takes another shot. We were good with the 10s. You know, that's in position play, guys, and that was a good bet from that guy. Uh, he floated us coming into, the, coming into the turn, and you see the power there of that float move, right? you got to be looking at um, 
not only your play but the play of your opponents and yeah when they play well you know definitely give them respect right that's a, that's a really good move if you had bet a little bit more I might have let this tense go um, yeah like that play really like that play so that's one of the things you know if I were actively playing this level all the time that I would you know go back into my uh, go back into my we just take a shot here um, go back into my um, I finally got a set um, go back into my database you know after the session find that guy find that hint and put a note on him you know savvy player and position player uh, knows how to float um, also is a bluff stuff like that and let's see if we can't get paid off one more time here with our flop set pair of aces all right raise those up guys don't limp don't limp those raise those up you know 3x or 4x at least A7 from the cutoff to steel raise. No action on the aces, bummer. Then again, yeah, for you guys who are just not checking in, um, you're going to see that I'm going to go ahead and check the uh, the check fold button from time to time because I'm playing so many tables here. And um, yeah, that's yeah, it's something that I advise against when you're playing one and two tables. And for most players, I would say that's generally a good idea. Um, However, here, you know, playing so many, I know, yeah, pretty much what I'm going to be playing, and, yeah, that's, yeah, I will be using that button here once I get, you know, once I'm playing three, three storm tables or more, yeah, and I think in our next session, um, I may give a six table session a shot, we'll have to see how, how things develop, but, yeah, so far so good, it's been, been a lot of fun here, um, but yeah, we'll be go ahead and you know, go ahead and uh, checking that button from time to time. And when you're playing, you know, when you're playing a session again with uh, tables that you have a good uh, overview of, then I would generally advise against that. C bet, take that down with the ace queen uh, bluff. C bet there on the flop, 97. We did get called, so we'll just see the river for free, and we'll know where we stand right now if he bets or not. <laughs> and he does, and we let that go with our jacks. And the old queen nine, he's thinking about it. More we'll flat in position, see what comes with flop top pair, always nice. See bet our jacks. Half pot on a rainbow board. Take it down and contest it. He flats. We're gonna we can place for pot control in position. If he checks, we'll just take the free turn, uh, free river. More than likely. Uh, he does not. And it's it's again it's a steel it's a steel battle, guys. It's a blind versus blind battle. And I think actually our top pair is good here. Um, we'll have to see what he does here on the river, but we're turning this into basically a bluff and deuce, bluff and deuce hand. And he gives up on the river, we check behind, and probably take it down with our queen. Yeah, yeah pot control in position in a blind versus blind, um, so-called blind battle. You don't need a really strong hand, right, especially not six max in blind battles. I mean, top pair is very often good, uh, especially when you're in position, when you're in the big facing uh, action from the small. Um, you can get away with that a lot, and that was one of those times. Here we're flat versus haunted again um, for set value. Uh, it's raised up, so that means he's got an option to re-raise if we do flat this, and we'll just let the force go. We're not closing the betting round. Whenever you're set mining, guys, you want to be closing the betting round as often as possible, right? Um, here we dunk out. You don't want to flat that just to have somebody behind you come over the top, and you get a you know you're basically burning money like that. Um, yeah, we pick up the inside straight draw to boot here. He only flatted. We're taking another shot, and let's see if he can let it go on the turn. No diamond. Very good. Uh, over call here. Uh, flat here with a crazy eight for what? <laughs> yep, set value. And swing and miss yet again. Both tables. And we'll play on. Yeah, can't call that uh, position without the goods. Under the gun razor, you gotta be strong to make that call. Alright, and fill a big stack player here, even deep stacked. Uh, again, that's. Against deep stack players, flatting for set value is even more lucrative because uh, a lot of these guys will play their top pair 
a uh, good kicker or over pairs, you know, for stacks, even when you flop the set of fours, for example, here. This time we'll let that go. No set, no bet, you know, versus a guy who's got you covered. Um, especially deep stack play guys, you want to be a two pair or better if you want to be even considering playing for stacks, right? Best case scenario, you know, nuts, second nuts, <laughs> flop sets, stuff like that. Again, be very, very careful, as you guys have seen in a couple of these hands, um, that should have been 3x. Um, here we're going to flat in position again, um, flop top pair good kicker, top pair good kicker down low too. Uh, again, it's another blind battle, and we're just going to raise that up, because we do have the top pair. And it's blind battle again, it's going to be a weaker hand that you're facing in many cases. This guy bets it, we're going to play this again for pot control. Over call here, over flat on the button, flop top two. Nothing's changed on this board underneath, um, whew, but he bets hard. Uh, <laughs> Well, 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 that's pretty much, I mean, it's effectively a push from this guy, right? And all of a sudden, I don't like my top pair anymore, and I'll let that go. But I do, however, like my top two. And if he's on a set of nines, we can just say a good hand. And he may well be. King Jack, however. And we're still good. And take that down. And here we'll over cold call again for set value. Hope to pick up last position, and we do. No set, no bet, more than likely, but we're in position. So it's a good thing about in position play. You know, we get a couple checks here. These guys are in ace kings, ace jack, stuff like that, under pairs. Um, we may be able to take this down with some in position betting, as we'll try right now. Get a little distracted, timed out on the top left. It's gonna happen. So yeah, I'm questioning if I if I should even attempt the uh, six tables here at the storm. He checks again, and we're gonna take another shot. Um, nothing's you know nothing's really changed. Um, we're representing the queen there, and in position we take that down with a couple straights of aggressive betting. In position play, guys. In position play. In position play. In position play. All right. And again, you know, you always have the initiative, right? When, you, when you're when you the last pre-flop aggressor or the last aggressor um, from the previous street. So again, yeah, re-steal push. I think uh, you, know, you guys need to see that, that video for sure. I think it was the third where we went into um, kind of the pot odds and the equity needed uh, to call those mid-stack, small-stack shoves. And for all intents and purposes, as a general rule, we're looking at H-jack suited, you know, from a re-steal push from the blinds, or um, in all honesty, more more like ace queen suited or a pair of tens are better. Um, we saw that we can get all the way down to pair of nines, pair of sevens in some cases, but you know, as a general rule, if you want to be safe, flat versus a three bet shove, um, tens are better, ace queen are better. Here we get flop and the turn for free. <laughs> He bets into us, and you know we're on an inside straight draw. Don't have the flush draw to boot. Flat that for set value. Flop our king, bet that out. Fold this, fold this, and play on. 99, big swing and a miss. I'm gonna bet that again. And now we're worried. <laughs> Third diamond. Again, small stakes guys, if they got any kind of uh, diamond draw, it's often going to go downtown one way or another. Uh, not, not a, not a, not a. Alright, so we get another two checks, and this time we got to take a shot. Um, representing the ace of the queen, these guys apparently are afraid of that board. And we smell blood. And went hunting. Alright, so here we go. This is a what, guys? Open raise, flat, and I make a yeah, squeeze. Three bet from the small one. So it's a re-steal squeeze. And again, half pot it if you squeeze it on most on most boards. Um, works much better, of course, when you just play versus the uh, one caller. Uh, overlooked that again. Yeah, a lot of action. Uh, might have might have opted out of that. But I'm thinking now he's not on the queen, but on a flush draw kind of deal under pairs, and I make one final bet on the river. 
to represent that queen. <laughs> Hold my breath. And get flatted, Shiza. That's pretty disgusting. Um, he was in the flush draw, picked up a bare pair at the end, and then flats. Um, versus a pretty hefty bet. And that, yeah, uh, post post session, that would be another hand, you know, to, to mark and then go in and, you know, tag this guy's station. Um, you know, value bet to death um, with any non completed draw kind of deal. Flatting here uh, for set value, look for the five. Swing and a miss, out of position versus two players, no set, no bet. Duck out. Finally wake up Cowboys again. Under the gun razor. Base 10 you can fold with a very good conscience. And we do get a guy betting into us, is always nice. Why you don't F. <laughs> so why you don't F Fs. <laughs> Yeah, we take it down. <laughs> yeah, under the gun again, Razor, A6, same man. Here we'll just flat the min bed here with our twos and look for that set. Daddy needs a new pair of twos here, come on. Oh, another swing and a mess. And again, guys, you know, as I mentioned at the uh, beginning of the video, our set value for the last, I think, 15, 16,000, or 15, 1600 hands um, was it yeah, basically time and a half of what it should have been. Um, and yeah, we're definitely approaching the balance point there, I'd assume. Uh, he bets the one and we check on out. He's nine, we'll check behind. And we'll have more fold equity, by the way, guys, with the delayed, delayed bet here on the turn. And we can also let it go and just bet into us. Steel raise on the button, suited as eight. Running straight draw, nada. <laughs> okay. He min bits into us. We catch our A's. Always nice. And of course, bet that out on the turn. No dice. He checks here and again. This is half pot. I'm going to have probably the same amount of fold equity. I bet half of his pot is when I would just go ahead and shove here. Um, so if he doesn't have it, hopefully he'll let it go. Um, but if he calls it down with any bear eight or three or something, he's got it, of course. But I gotta take a shot because that's the only way I can take down that pot. And I do. Alright, under the gun, fast decision, Razor. Does make a fast decision and raise it up. And we make a faster decision and three bet him from the big with our jacks. And he lets it go. So, uh, raise, re raise. AJ offsuit. Don't get excited about that hand, guys. Let that go. Raise one up here with the offsuit Broadway. Flop the overs. Do get flatted. Checks a bet. How much on a rainbow board? <laughs> Half pot. He's only got a full one time and three for us to break even. And that was one of those times. So complete uh, bluff raise here as a steal uh, with the king eight suited. And here we can flat here in a four-way pot with our fours. Very good for implied odds. And we flop the full fours over twos. Now we're going to check and hope one of these guys in position makes a positional bet as they should very often. Come on. Uh, it is so weak. And here I just flat, right, because I want one of these guys to come over the top or, or play along. Bummer. And this guy should give us another shot. And he does not, however. <laughs> we want to get paid here for six. And he did not have the two. Yeah, so that worked out for our fours for once. Is eight. No dice. 86, steel raise from, ah, 
cut up again. There should have been three X guys. That was a misclick or a non-click. And we get re-raised here for 60 cents here. Fellow big stacker. Good speculative hand. Flop the open in a straight draw and a pair. Like that flop a lot. So here we're going to float him. Pick up two pair, but of course now if he's playing the bear nine or the bear four, we're toast. But we got a lot of fold equity here on our float line. And there's the eight. And now we're not happy about that at all. Uh, the only good thing is that he may have missed his flush draw. So we check here with basically sixes. Ah, god dang it. Uh, that eight killed us on the river. We had two pair there on the turn. And that eight, basically when the board paired, his over pair, um, he was playing queens over eights. And yeah, we got hoes on the river yet again. As poker guys, it's going to happen. Um, don't flip out, just play on. Again, yeah, don't, yeah, don't, don't tilt, don't get off your game, don't, don't start making looser calls, just play on and um, play your first hand the same as you play your last. And that's what it's all about, you know, in the end it's all one very long session. So again, this is Dylan for MyBet.com here in our Storm Poker Challenge. Wishing you all the best in general and definitely best of luck at your next Storm Poker Table.